What's poppin' kooks? Welcome back to another episode of Coop on the Clock. Uh, my name's Alex, uh, your usual uh, Thursday host. This is... I'm Eric Aguilar, uh, assistant producer here. <laughs> and it's currently rainy and windy here in the Palouse. A bit um, of a brisk day. Yeah, yeah. Did not think to check the weather for today's episode. But uh, we're going to do one of these once a month, an outdoor episode, uh, where you, you guys, the Cougs, come up and take your shot at taking, uh, give us your take on some sports topics. So uh, without further ado, let's go. Let's, let's get it. in the show. All right. All right, guys, we're back here with the next with our next topic with <laughs> with Gunner Scott Miller, um, who sounds like you want to talk about Mariners baseball, right? Let's talk Mariners baseball. Mariners. Oh my! I'm putting my head up. Right. Yeah, me too. All right, so uh, what do you to say? Um, I just think you know with how the season went, we started off really bad. You know, like 12 games under 500, and then we stormed all the way back. You know, winning like 41. Uh, we went 41 and 16 to end the year, and I think that's like really just shows how resilient this team is. I think with some off-season additions and all of that, I think the Mariners are a top five team in baseball with their rotation, which is top five in the league. Okay. And then if they get you know a shortstop that's willing to play second base or move JP to second base, I think we are a top five team in the league. Do you with think more outfielder bats? Do you think next year's the year? You know, it's or hard do you to think, say. Do you think it'll be kind of like the Bengals, where the Bengals went all the way this this last year, right? Yeah. Right now, it doesn't look like they're even going to make playoffs. Yeah. So, do you think the Mariners will even will even make the playoffs next year? Oh, 100 percent. The only thing they okay. can do this off season is get better, and like, like I said, making the off season additions makes your team that much better. And with how good our roster already is, with young talent and more people coming out of the farm, it just makes the team more competitive in okay. spots and. That will be important. So, uh, Aaron Judge, if you're watching this, which you are definitely not, you know what to do. <laughs> so, I thought to ask you, what it, I mean, how do you feel about the possibility of Aaron Judge joining you guys? You know, I would, I would like that. But then again, like, you know, he's probably going to be asking for, you know, an insane amount of money. Which Aaron is breaking, Judge money. Aaron Judge money, which yeah. breaking the home run, you know, breaking the home run record money, sort yeah. of. And I just yeah. don't think the Mariners are willing to do that. So, mm-hmm. kind of what I'm hoping for is, you know, make a shot at Andrew Benatendi this year. Okay. Uh, this offseason, along with, you know, Alexander Bogarts, because he's known to play second base, and so is Trey Turner. So getting those guys will be especially important. Hi. Yeah. All right, cool. Hey, Cougs, back here with another guest here. We actually have a member of the Wazoo football team. Christian Hillborn. Christian Hillborn. How are we doing today, Christian? Pretty good. You, you know what? Since I have a player here, I would love to talk Cougar football, if that's okay with you. Sounds good. So tell us how the team is doing right now. I mean, I think we're doing really good. Um, we've been really gelling as a unit Mm -hmm. like really well recently um yeah i mean it's it's been it's been a really fun season so far of course of course how's that how's that locker room feeling i mean you you mentioned you know gelling really well i mean i it's 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 a great atmosphere to be Uh in um we're we're all pretty close to each other right you know there's there's just a lot of camaraderie in the locker room Mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a it's a great atmosphere well there you go you guys got any I mean, I don't know. It's your bye week, mm-hmm. right? You guys getting any maybe perhaps fun plans? Take your mind off football for a little bit, or is it all business? Um, uh, the O line. We went out, we went out to dinner with our quarterback last night. Okay, there you go. Um, Who paid? Cam. Cam paid. Hey, Cam paid. you know what? Thanks, Cam. That's Look, cool. Looking out for his boys. There you go. Um, but yeah, just went out last night. Um, not sure what's going on today or uh-huh. tomorrow. Just or right. we have a little little dinner tomorrow. Um, with the team in the press box, so that's, that'll be exciting. There you go. That's cool. That's cool. And then, so, practicing, right, next game here on the Palouse. Are you guys forecasting any game plans for that as of yet, or is that kind of more next week? Stuff? <clears throat> yeah, we uh, we went over uh, their general defense and what we're expecting to see uh, uh-huh. this past week. Um, I'm sure we're going to... Put in some more stuff. Maybe oh, not. We'll we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty pumped for this game. because oh, I'm I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. So. Oh, are you? It'll it'll be a it'll be a nice little upset for us. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I'm sure you got a lot of friends and family back home. You know. Yeah. Texting you, gonna watch the game. Definitely. Right? You know. Yeah. Like you uh, my brother's uh, friend growing up. His uh-huh. his dad always texts me. Uh, you know, I'm rooting for you. Except you for when, except for when you're playing Utah. There you go. So. <laughs> 
be it'll be good to shut him up a little bit. You know what? That's our cue, Christian. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, of course. I appreciate you, it. Oh, likewise. Thank you. Uh, have a good day here today, Friday, and oh, yeah. uh, stay warm. It's pretty cold out today. Oh yeah. So thanks, Cooks. All right, here with another topic. Um, Nick, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi guys, I'm Nick Habra. I'm the punter for the Washington State football team, awesome. and yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about AFL. AFL. Now, what is AFL? Well, AFL is my hometown sport or country sport. It's uh, it's the main sport I reckon. It's probably the most popular, um, but it's it's hard to explain for you guys. It's played on a massive oval ground. That's probably like the same width of like a track and field 400 meter run. Okay. So that's probably the width of the AFL field. And it's got goalposts on each end. And that's why like punting is like an easy transition because you have to punt it through the goalposts to huh. score points. Interesting. Yeah. So it, it, it sounds horrible. In a way, it's kind of like paper football. Like in a way, like, you know. You a, li a little bit, but like lots of running, probably like the same amount of running as like a soccer player. Okay. That's like, right. yeah, you, I remember when I was playing, because prior, prior to punting, I played AFL, so um, I had GPS trackers on when I was playing, and I'd run around uh, nine miles to ten miles a game. So is there, I'm assuming, is there a professional level of this, right? Oh, yeah. So uh -huh. what would you consider doing professional AFL over professional football, Amer American football? Um, the pay is not as good, so... <laughs> I mean, and it's a brutal sport, so you got to weigh up the options and be like, well, punting, you don't get hit. <laughs> you can stay in the league a lot longer. Gotcha. AFL, you get hit a lot from all different directions, so, sure. yeah. Um, what would, who's, who's your favorite professional Australian football league team? I'd have to say Dustin Martin. You guys probably don't even know who that is, but... He's just a he's just a weapon. He just stiff arms people all the time. Just puts them on their ass, and it's good to watch. Yeah. Sure. All right. Uh, any other, I guess, like opinions you have on the sport? Opinions? I oh, know. I just think it's the greatest sport in the history. <laughs> That's <laughs> about should. it. There's you just should. so much you can do with it, so it's great. Oh, all right. I think we're good. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, mate. Um. Yeah. Ready. Next topic. Hey, folks. Uh, here with another guest here. Harrison. Harrison, what's up? What's up, Harrison? How are you doing today? Doing all right. A little cold, but oh, no kidding. It doesn't stop us. Yeah, a little cold. You know yeah. what? Sports. We got two minutes. What's your take? What are we talking about today? So I think for the Olympic side of things, okay. adding skateboarding was yeah. the best thing they've done in decades. And that was a fairly recent move, was it not? That was yes. within the last last Olympics or last two Olympics. I think it was last. I can't tell if it was last year or the second one before that, but uh -huh. yeah, definitely it was a good addition. It made oh. me worthwhile watching. You so. know what? I was actually watching that with my pops, and I was thinking to myself, how are they going to do this in a professional manner, make it look cool, make it look engaging, right? I think they did a good job, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, they, they borrowed a lot, I think, from how X Games goes and uh, scores mm -hmm. a lot of their games, like whether it be like BMX or snowboarding, sure. or whatever it may be. And so they were doing like style and tricks, and I think it was right. a good way to get a lot of younger people interested in yeah. the Olympics, because yeah. I think they're falling off these last couple of years. So. Yeah, definitely right, definitely right, yeah. And most of the competitors were younger people. Which yeah. definitely adds to it. For yeah, sure. it's like if you can see yourself up there and you're like, oh, maybe I could do something like that. Whereas if you're seeing a bunch of older people, which isn't the target demographic for Olympics, but something that you're interested in that's not typically shown on mass television, then exactly. you're like, hey, maybe I could do that. So. Do you skateboard? I uh, longboard and snowboard. Like, okay, well, there you go. Do you watch the Winter Olympics then? Uh, yeah, I do. You do? do you, how do you find that? I enjoyed it. Uh, I remember Sean White tried showing up last year and uh, completely uh, just wiped out on a half pipe yeah. for his last run. But it's whatever, you know. Right. Old timers getting out there, but yeah, sure. it's uh, it was a good time. It was a good time. Okay, so. there you go. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you know, Sean White. You can't blame him. He's an old feller, right? He's got he's had his glory days. He's on his way out. You know, just yeah. another maybe last glory one. But uh, that wasn't bad at all. It wasn't bad at all. Yeah, I think a lot of younger people are trying to get more into the uh, the X Games side oh, of it. Definitely. But uh, yeah. I haven't seen anyone as of late come up in snowboarding, uh, mainly with Olympics or X Games, because there's not a lot of money to be made unless you're sponsored. Mm, so that's so true. That's so yeah. You yeah, can't really fund yourself without. It's sad. It's a cool hobby too. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. So. 
All right, looks like that was our time here. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate Thanks it, man. Uh, stay warm today. I will. We'll see you around. Man. Thanks, Cougs. All right, guys, we're back with another topic uh, and two new guests. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Um, my name is Abby. I'm Zizo. Zizo. All right. Uh, and what are we what are we talking about today? We're gonna talk about soccer. <sighs> soccer. Soccer. All righty. Uh, why don't you guys leave the, leave the conversation? What are we doing? So my hot take is that the U.S. will win the 2022 World Cup. That's in November. <laughs> That's really hot. Christian Pulisic, the LeBron James of soccer, will have an absolute master class, score a hat trick the against LeBron England. LeBron James of American soccer? No, Le just LeBron James of soccer. Okay. Of okay. soccer, yeah. Of soccer. Yeah. Okay. He will score a hat trick against England. He will lead us to the World Cup final where he will beat Messi in his very last World Cup. Is That's my hot sad. take. That's sad. Mm -hmm. Heartbreak That's, for Messi, but good for us. That's, that is, is that your hot take too? No, my hot take is different. Oh, okay. So your hot take, that is very hot. Um, spicy. Spicy. Spicy take. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've historically never seen them do well. But well, have we'll you see. watched soccer? Some soccer. Yeah. I've watched some soccer. So this, <laughs> this is a golden a generation. Bit. Okay. Nobody's in form right now, but once the World Cup starts. We'll be ready. They'll be ready. Okay. All right, what's your take real quick? Uh, my hot take is that Arsenal is actually in a title race this season. People think we're going to fall off soon, but we're, we're doing well. We're like yeah, one, one loss, all wins. We're winning the league this season. Nice. All right, by the way, I'm only leaning in because I don't have a mic, and they do. So I'm going to talk to you like this. They're so good. you think they're better than usual? Oh, yeah. Hmm. The last few seasons, we've been like eighth place, sixth place. This year, we started off all wins and one loss. We're in first place, four points on top. Okay. We're, we're doing well, I think. I'm really happy with how it's going so far. Now, what do you think of her take? Her take is good. Okay. I like it. Right. I believe it. Mm -hmm. right. Um, how we, we do? You know, I, what do you think of it? What do you think of his take? I think it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we're a tyrant. You know we're a tyrant. No, I think Arsenal's gonna choke. I think Chelsea and Christian Pulisic no. are gonna carry and they're gonna win the league. You actually think they're gonna win the league? Yep, they're winning <laughs> okay, the league. Arsenal's no, gonna no. fall off. As soon as they play real teams, no, they're no, no. going to start falling We're off. finishing above you. After Christmas. We're finishing above you. Who's above you? Who are, who's you? Ten dollars. Ten dollars? Uh, Chelsea. Okay. Okay. We're finishing gotcha. above you. I got I to gotta brush up some, uh, on some soccer, apparently, So because yeah. I have no clue what we're talking about. But anyways, we're going to go on uh, to our next topic soon. Um, you guys need to stay warm because it is cold Thank as balls out here. Really cold. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you guys in a second. Hey, Cougs, we got another guest here today. Your name is? Austin Samuels. Austin Samuels. Yes, what are sir. we talking about today here, Austin? Blazers. Right here, baby. Trailblazer basketball. NBA right. season starting up. Yes, sir. It has. Yeah. Yes, How do the, have the Blazers did play the game. They have. And they won that game. 1-0, right? baby. We beat, we beat the there Kings, you but, you know, a it's, win's a win. I mean, the Kings are, you know, Darren Fox, and that's about it, really. All I got to say about the Kings is... They're the worst organization in basketball. That, you know Alex, what? you know it. Man, They're the worst organization in basketball. My There's no My co-host is from Sacktown. He's a big Kings fan. <laughs> Unfortunately oh, for them, well, let's not say big Kings fan, but a Kings admirer nonetheless, no. right? Admirer. You know you are. You know you are. You know you are. You know what? The Trailblazers are a really interesting team to talk about because, I mean, mm. obviously you have the excellent player that is Damian Lillard. Of course. Right? He's a star. Of course. And there's no there's no tandem duo one two punch to help out the Trailblazers. What are we? Well, what, you know, the, what are we doing? What are we doing? I agree, but I disagree at the okay. same time. Right, you know, for the past seven years until they traded him last year, you know, it was Dame and CJ, right? That True. was the backcourt tandem. They traded away CJ at the trade deadline last year, but I feel like Anthony Simons has grown to the point where now in year five, where he can almost be at CJ-like production. Okay. And maybe even replace that production from him to be that one-two punch in the backcourt, which is why they've been so relevant for the past, you know, decade almost, fair. is because very of that fair. tandem and that duo. You know what? That, that's, a, that's a very hot take here, folks. Um, Predictions. Playoffs, predictions. deep playoffs, playing in tournaments. You know, I'm a big fan, but I'm also a realist. I, so I admire that. I think it's going to be – I think we're going to make the playoffs. I don't think okay. that's okay. – I think last year was a fluke. We tanked at the end of the year because everybody was hurt. Sure. I think probably around a five or a six seed. Yeah. 
That's and okay. maybe, just maybe, you know, in the NBA, it all depends on matchups when you get in the playoffs. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, maybe we get a team like Denver, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, in the first round. Maybe we upset them. Right. But I'm not going to go anything bold or say we're going to make some far. big run. That's fair. That's fair. Here's the biggest thing about the Blazers, and I don't know how much time we have. but Keep going. You're chilling. The biggest thing for them is they have to be better on defense. You're precisely right. You're exactly Last right. Last year and for the past, like, three years, mm -hmm. they've been, like, bottom three yeah. in defensive yeah. rating, yeah. which is just atrocious. You can't win in the playoffs. You can't. In, in the NBA if you can't play defense. You and that's you. been the biggest problem. Precisely right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Folks, you heard it here first. Blazers with a early but not too deep playoff run. Thanks for coming we'll see, on the we'll show. We'll see. We'll see. Thank you. Oh, Thank no, you for course, having me. Of course. Uh, stay warm. Until next time. We'll catch you with the next topic. All right, guys. We're back with the next topic. Um, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi. I'm Erica. I'm a comm major here at WSU. Oh. All right. So what are we talking about today? Uh, the fact that the Dodgers did not make it to the World Series and that I'm upset. <laughs> Uh, a lot of the people behind the camera think that, <laughs> that uh, this, is a, this is not the most important thing to be upset about. It is. The, so, okay. it, the Friday was a horrible day. Mariners, out. Dodgers, out. Cougs, lost. Well, that was Saturday. But yeah, I get you. I get you. I get that. It was um, Saturday. <laughs> so, okay, well then, so now that, that now your beloved Dodgers are out, right? The, your Mickey mm -hmm. Mouse team. How, uh, who, do you, who are you looking for to win now? To win? I don't actually care. <laughs> to make it to the series? <laughs> I want the Phillies and the Yankees to make it just because I want the Padres to be out so bad. I'm so mad that they beat the Dodgers. It's cute that we have the first ever hitter-pitcher pair-up of siblings in the postseason. That's fun with the Phillies and the Padres, but I want the Padres to be out so badly. Okay. Um, what is your reasoning for uh, the Yankees? Team? My friends like the teams. I like the Yankees. They're fine. They're fine. Have you I want the Astros to lose. They took the Mariners out. I want them to be done. That's true. That's true. Okay, so you, have, you want Yankees and Phillies. Yeah. Who do you think will win? <sighs> who do I think will win or who do I want to win? Who I want to win, I'd love if the Phillies won. Won it all? Yeah. That's yeah. A, I, I agree. Thank I, you. I agree. Thank we you. said this on the show a couple days ago. We the Phillies, I want the Phillies to win. Philadelphia is the city to be in, huh? No, it's not that fun. No, it's <laughs> well, for sports. I want them to win, though. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Go Phillies. Go. Do it with me. Oh, go Phillies. Go. This not, is. Is you question it? Go Phillies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm questioning it a lot. <laughs> All right, that's all for this, for this uh, subject. We'll move on to the next time. We'll see you guys in a second. What's up, Cougs? I'm actually here with my good buddy, Sam Taylor, today. Sam, what are we talking about today? What's up? Thanks for having me, Eric. Of course, um, of course. So I'm a huge Mariners fan Okay. and Coug fan, as you can see, but we'll focus on the Mariners right. based on this, this hat that's appeared on the table all of a sudden. <laughs> um, and I'm just, you know, I'm just very elated at the season that we've had. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. You know, everybody wants to go win the World Series, but what the Mariners right. did this year right. was just unprecedented and just amazing. Just they, just, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? From a sports perspective, you gotta love the good story. You know what I mean? Not making the playoffs in, a, well, is it around twenty years? Twenty-one years, around? yeah. Twenty-one years. This is the first playoff run that I have experienced in my life. That's insane. That's that's. <laughs> you know what? So from a sports perspective, it's a real feel-good story, right? Um, they certainly had a, a a good team. Nothing to be frowned upon on the yeah. roster, right? And you know. It was a good run. It was. It was a good run, and there's always next year. Absolutely. Always next year. And just, there's so many reasons to love this team. And so at the end of the year press conference, uh -huh. um, based, President of Baseball Operations Jerry DePoto said that the bulk of the 2023 squad, next year's squad, is already here. Mm -hmm. So okay. the guys that we know and love, Julio Rodriguez, J.P. Crawford, the big dumper, Cal the Raleigh, big dumper. they're here to stay, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. You know what? M's are out. Who are you taking to win it all this MLB postseason? Now, Eric, I know you're a Padres fan. I am. And because am. you're such a good friend, I'm going to rock your Padres all the way to the World Series. Let's go, Padres. You heard it here. Sam Taylor and myself taking the San Diego Padres to win it all. If we don't win, that's okay. I'll we might cry. look like chumps, but that's all right. The M's didn't win either. There's always next year. There's yes, sir. Year. Yes, always. sir. All right. 
All right, Sam, looks like we're wrapping up on time here. So thanks for coming out. Thanks for having me, Eric. And we'll see you guys later. Go Rams, go Cougs. Go Cougs. What's up, Cougs? Finishing out the day here with a good buddy of mine. Uh, BG. BG, what's going on, BG? How are Eric, you? it's great to be on. Here, so my question that I posed to, to you. Me. Do it. Um, we haven't really talked about it, but the national nathan's hot dog championships there you go that's there's, a sport and a half right yes there. There, there is a go. lot there of controversy go. with the whole there was a uh a, a rioter uh -huh. up on a the protester. stage yeah, yeah i don't i don't remember exactly what it was because they didn't try to glorify it but mm -hmm. um the mm -hmm. question i pose to you mm -hmm. is i think stuffing meat down your throat is a total like if you can do that that is just way to go but should it be meat or non-meat? Should there be an option for having fake meat? Like who, or should it be just in a different category of its own? Because they do it for buns. So right. if it's gluten, they have gluten-free options sure. for some of the, sure. uh, the contestants. Should they have a vegan, a vegan one or uh, just totally something different? Because a non-meat sausage. Exactly. You know what? That's actually an interesting point there because realistically the whole, the whole, uh, how do I put it? The whole challenge of the sport is the cylindrical shape of the dog, right? Yeah. But, so, when you bring up that, it's like, okay, well, we can use anything, right? But, damn it, it's been hot dogs for so long. Yeah. we got to keep it dogs. But I mean, Joey Chestnut is up there with LeBron James and Michael Phelps. Yes. He is one of the premier, one of the best athletes to ever have been born on this planet. Yeah, and if you don't know the sport at all, you know who Joey Chestnut is. You know, is. he's an American, he's a hero. You know what? Yes. Joey Chestnut for president. Yeah, and so... Joey Chestnut for president. But that's the other thing is... I, I kind of agree with you, but I think we need to step in the in the modern age okay, okay. and give that option to some candidates to have the vegan dog. Sure, but I think sure. it should be a contest in and of itself because the meat and juiciness of a real pork getting right. down your throat having, is uncomparable it, to it, it, anything exactly, else. Exactly. You know? It would be so, an athletic disadvantage with a different consistency. Yes. So okay, it should okay, be. It's okay. just a totally different contest. The vegans and the non-vegans. Uh -huh, because uh -huh. you know, it doesn't have the same juiciness right. in the other category right. so it's just like stuffing down cardboard and that in and of itself is a different challenge who yeah. knows if joey could do that could he actually be competitive in the vegan in the hot vegan dog, dog circuit absolutely you know what that's a phenomenal question uh yeah i, I you know what when you i, I don't know and you today, don't know I, you know there we go question pose it to the people put it in the comment section here today folks i did not think we'd be talking about the future, that is, the hot dog, competitive hot dog eating sport. Uh -huh. uh, but here we go. Super flaming hot takes. A vegan take, if you might. Uh-huh. Huh? Is there? Yeah. Uh -huh. here, we here, we here, we here with BG. Uh, BG, thanks for coming out. Eric, thank, thank you. you for, thank you. Is there a bell? Where's the, there we go. Ring There's my the bell. bell. Ring my bell. Mm. Mm. Oh, there you go. There we go. Yeah. Thanks, dude. All right, guys. That wraps up for our uh, first inaugural episode of Outdoor Mobile Coog on the Clock. Mm -hmm. Coog, actually, technically, Coog on the Mall. Coog on the Mall. There you go. I like that. What I like say? that. That could be Coog on the Mall. Coog, Coog, <laughs> Coog on the Palouse. Coog. I'm tired. Um, Very tired. <laughs> but uh, th make sure you follow all of, your, uh, all of our social media accounts on Instagram, at Waza Sports Network, on Twitter, at Waza Sports Net. Um, go make sure you f subscribe, like, comment on all of our great content and videos that come out on Cable 8 on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Make sure you also check out the merch store. Do it. Get yourself uh, some nice, warm WC WSN merch, uh, especially going into this cold season. We should have definitely... Been wearing. Uh, some it's more. so cold. It is. It's Freezing. it's cold today on the Palouse, folks. Definitely. I'm, I'm shivering. I don't know if it's because I'm hungry, tired, or just cold. Well, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Go Cougs.